So one of the other important areas where mathematics can be brought to bear on a cryptographic problem involves something called the incidence of coincidence. And the idea is the following. Suppose I end up with some sort of encrypted message. I have something that looks a little bit like this, for example. And I want to have some idea of what type of encipherment has been used for this. Uh, for a variety of reasons, this is not particularly important nowadays because in general we know the type of encipherment that's being used, uh, but historically this has been an important question. So there's many different types of ciphers that I could use, and so one of the things I can do is to examine what's called the incidence of coincidence. So. The basic idea is this. Suppose I have some sort of text which is written in some natural language like English four score and seven years ago and so on. And so this is a natural language text. And the idea is that suppose I pick two letters from this text completely at random. Uh, for example, these two. So here I pick this letter here and this letter here, D and N. And most of the time when I pick these two letters at random, they will actually be different letters. But from time to time, the two letters will be the same. So I may pick this I here, and as my second letter, this I here. And so every now and then, I will have a coincidence of the two letters chosen being the same. And if you look at a typical English text, because of the distribution of letters in the English language, uh, about 6.8% of the time, this will occur. So if I pick two randomly chosen letters from an English text, about 6.8% of the time, the two letters will be the same letter. On the other hand, if I have a text consisting of letters chosen completely at random, uh, which is to say that the letters are chosen with equally likely probabilities, then the incidence of coincidence will be much lower, typically around 3.8%. And everything from a pure English text to some not quite completely random set of letters will give me some sort of intermediate incidence of coincidence. And so this thing is actually preserved by a substitution cipher. So if a cipher text has a high incidence of coincidence, uh, it is reasonable to conclude that it was produced using a substitution cipher. So how do we compute this incidence of coincidence? So suppose I have a particular letter that appears k times among n letters in my cipher text. So there's n choose 2, n times n minus 1 over 2, different ways that I can pick two letters at random from my ciphertext. And there's k choose 2, k times k minus 1 over 2. There's this many ways that I can pick the designated letter twice. So that means if I pick two letters completely at random, then out of the this many ways that I can pick two letters at random, there's this many ways that the two letters I picked were this particular letter. And so that gives me this probability k, k minus 1 over 2 over n, n minus 1 over 2. And after all the dust settles, that's the product of k, k minus 1 over n times n minus 1. Now, that is just one of the many letters that I have. So if I want to generalize this to look at the probability that the two letters will be the same letter without focusing on any individual letter, then my incidence of coincidence is going to be found by summing up all of the probabilities of this nature. And that's going to look something like this. So it's going to be the sum of this product ki times ki minus 1, where ki is the number of times the ith symbol appears. So let's go back to our ciphertext. So it's this horrible mess of letters, and before my eyes glaze over, I can try and find out how many times a particular symbol occurs. So I'm just going to count the occurrences of letters. So the letter A appears, well, I've appears all of these times here, and if I count the number of times the letter A appears, I see that it occurs 22 times in the ciphertext. Likewise, I might try to count the letter B and look for the occurrences of B. There's here, there's here, and altogether there's a whole two times that it occurs. And I can do that for all the remaining letters of the ciphertext. And now that I have this information, I can use this frequency to compute the incidence of coincidence. So again, that's going to be the product of these numbers. So it turns out there's 270 characters altogether, so my denominator is going to be n270 times n minus 1. And my numerator is going to be the product of every one of these numbers with 1 less, all of those products added together. So I'll take 22 
times 21. My next term is 2, so that's going to be 2 times 2 minus 1. And then the others, 0 I'm not going to count, 0 times who cares what, doesn't matter, 19 times 1 less, and so on and so forth. And when I find the value here, when I add those up, I get about 0 0.0718. And that's a relatively high incidence of coincidence. It says that if I pick two letters at random from this ciphertext, I'm going to find that they are the same letter about 7% of the time. And that's high enough that it is reasonable to conclude that the ciphertext was in fact produced using a substitution cipher of some sort.